Okay guys, I don't feel like welding anymore tonight. So what I'm going to do is start this expansion tank. So I added this tube, as we know, and that totally made our factory expansion tank not possible. So I bought a radiator cap and a couple fittings from our local shop Gearhead. And now I'm just going to make a quick and easy, small little uh, expansion tank. So we're just having a little arts and crafts session here. And I'm getting this all uh, mocked up and ready to roll. And uh, we'll replicate it out of aluminum. So here's our expansion tank. Just tacked together right now. And it's just gonna go right here. Something like that. Nothing fancy. I'm gonna weld it up right now and I gotta get out of here cause it's getting dark out and the dogs need to be let outside. Well, there we have it. Nothing fancy. All right, check out what we got going on. I got our expansion tank welded up. Made a mistake. James actually pointed it out. This should have been welded first from the inside. So dummy me, but whatever. We'll weld it from the outside. It's just not gonna look as clean. But whatever, that's all good. So right now I'm just making some fittings. Uh, you can kind of see here. This one's gonna go here. This one's gonna go here. And let me show you how that's done real quick. Well guys, I couldn't couldn't deal with uh, that cap situation. I wanted it to look clean, I know it was temporary. So I wound up cutting the lid off, just making a new lid, and then we're gonna weld this on here. So that's how you properly install these. Nice and clean, weld it from the backside. Bada bing, bada boom. This thing is nuclear right now, so. But that'll be it. And then I'm gonna weld my uh, outlet tubes on and we're good to go. Well guys, we just finished pressure testing this and everything looks good. We actually had a tiny, tiny little pinhole. Where was it? Right about here somewhere. So I just had to go and zap that real quick. Always very important to pressure test a tank. What I do is I have, um, I just have a air gun and I put a radiator cap on it and plug up the holes give it about 20, 30 PSI, and then squirt it down with a uh, soapy water mix, just some Dawn dis dish detergent. Squirt it all down and you'll see anywhere, if there's any kind of little tiny pinholes or something, you'll see it bubbling up. And that's how you pressure test a tank. So it's good that we did that because we definitely had one little spot that uh, had a very small pinhole that you could barely see, but it happens on these. So now I'm ready. Uh, I actually just have to order radiator, radiator cap. I had to borrow one. And um, so I'm gonna have to order a radiator cap, but let's, for now, let's get this thing fitted on here and see how it looks. All right, well, let's see how it sits. I wound up uh, swapping out the hose because I need a longer hose on the bottom side. And then this is the other hose, and that's for my radiator. So I got three hoses I have to hook up. But this, it's gonna sit right in there like that. Obviously, I have to get it level and square. What I'm going to do is just tack a couple 
um, steel mounts and add a couple aluminum mounts to here and this thing will sit real nice in here. But yeah, that should work out really well. I got plenty of room for that hose. I got a, plenty of length on this one I can play with, so that's looking great. Pretty happy with how that turned out. And you know what? There's really no reason not to have this on when I um, do my rear mounted, so I might just leave it. I might just leave it. it. Looks pretty good in there. All right, we tacked it in place as you just saw. That's our expansion tank. We welded these two, uh, I just welded these two bolts on. They're just little M6 bolts. Well, our coolant expansion tank is done. I ordered a cap for it and for the rear radiator, matching pressure caps, the same exact ones. So they'll have the same exact pressure uh, rating, which is, I believe it's 24 PSI is where this is. So high, high pressure. And uh, if this thing gets hot, it'll take a lot for it to boil over. But um, in the meantime, I, I know I mentioned in previous uh, segments here that I just wanted to get the cage painted and stuff now. However, I did decide that I am going to do a little more welding on the cage. And by welding, I mean um, light installation. So let me show you my idea on that. All right, so this is my idea uh, for the lights. What I did was I took a piece of sheet metal. This is like 20 gauge. And I uh, wrapped it around a piece of roll cage tubing, which for the small lights is approximately the, the diameter. This is an oddball size, so it's not like a piece of tubing will just sleeve over this or anything. So what these have is a couple of little set screws right here, okay? So my thought was to uh, just create this sleeve sleeve the light, okay? And then what we'll do is uh, do the set, uh, adjust the set screws. And if we leave it a little bit loose, it could give us a little room, but I'm not sure that's what we'll do. But at least the set screws will hold the light in and make it removable. But this is my thought, is we'll keep the seam on the bottom. And then we'll just weld a couple tabs or something to the roll cage and this will be a nice sleek look. So I'm gonna do the large one now to see how this looks. And um, I think it's gonna be pretty pretty cool looking. So before I do anything with the small one, we're gonna get the big one in there. And then these metal sleeves, or these steel sleeves rather, allow me just something to weld to, to make a headlight housing. Well guys, I have our headlights kind of mocked up. And let me show you kind of what I was thinking. I'm playing around with ideas right now. but that's how they look in current form. So obviously it's just zip tied on and everything, but I think it could be pretty cool. I'm not sure if I should have the halos always run with the DRLs or not. Um, these are also turn signals. So let me see if I can fire one of those up here real quick. Stand by. So that's pretty cool. I, I dig that. I think I might just leave it like that. I mean, it really works pretty well and matching on either side. I mean, I guess I could put this strip down here or something. Well, I'm not sure if that would be lame or not. Okay guys, they've been tuning a car next door so I haven't really been able to film because it's been too noisy, but I think there's a lull here. So I got my lights tacked on, okay? I just used some quarter inch round stock on the front ones just created a little spacer here and on the back I was just able to do like maybe three quarters of an inch of weld and these housings aren't going anywhere so that's that side this side I'm mocking up just so I can show you guys and it's a little bit tricky this top one I have tacked in what I did was I ran a level across the uh, across the car 
to make sure these uh, lights were level with each other, which means they'd be straight. Now these are fog lights. So that being said, there's not like a real definite beam on them. They're honestly pretty suck ass lights, but I think they'll keep the cops away from me at night. And that's really my biggest objective. And they kind of look cool with the halos on. But other than that, we're not gonna get too uh, specific about it. But you can see the contraption I have here. I have a couple magnets holding it. And, you know, everything's just spaced right. And then what I've been doing is I have my little angle cube. And I've just been leveling the face of the lights and then more or less eyeballing left and right. But it's really the up and down that I wanted to make sure they're level. That way I'm not, you know, blinding people and stuff at night. So I'm gonna get this one tacked in and maybe, maybe we can get these wired up today and functional, which would be super cool because then all I really have to do is get the tail lights wired up and I can drive this thing on the street. This side is finished. I just need to clean up how the wiring is done. But this is really straightforward. You just cut the plugs off, brown wire. So you got a ground and a hot and everything's working. So let me get this side buttoned up. I probably won't get it finished tonight. I gotta head out of here soon, but um, I'll definitely have it done tomorrow and we can see how these suckers look. So very excited. And I'm gonna roll outside now to see, get a good look at it. Let's just pulled it out. Let's see how they look. I think they look pretty all right as is. Once this cage and paint is painted and everything, uh, I think we'll be in a better position. Let's check out the parking lights. So I'll probably cruise around like this. Those look pretty good. Let's check out the low beam. Absolutely absurd. All right, here we got our low beams. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't turn the ignition on. Damn, that car make my ears bleed. Well, there's our low beams. Nice and subtle. I don't know how bright they actually are. I haven't had it out at night yet so i don't have my hopes up i don't think they're that that crazy and then here's the high beams which i did have one of these shined on the wall in the garage and it definitely worked i'm not sure how well it's going to work but there's street lights everything around here at night so it's more to keep me legal than anything the uh headlights so if i can find some nice projectors or hids or something to upgrade to later we can definitely do that it's easy just to remove these housings and do that. But here's the one thing I am a little disappointed with now that I'm looking at it. This turn indicator is not bright at all. Maybe I have it backwards or something. I don't know. Maybe that's just what it is. Maybe that's what you get for 10 bucks. So not the end of the world, but Maybe we can find a different solution for that because that's not that great. But overall, it's all there. Uh, all this is just loose. Um, this is what I use for to make the plug harnesses. So I'm gonna pull all these lights off because I gotta get this cage painted and that's happening uh, probably tomorrow. So the fabrication work on this is done. I just have to finish welding the back side of the gussets here and then it's pretty much all set. So very excited very excited about this right now so i'm gonna uh get to welding these gussets and hopefully get those done by the end of the day and after that i'm done fabricating i was gonna do more gussets on the cage and stuff but i really don't think it's necessary at this point and i would just want to get this thing in primer and be able to drive it on the streets so really hoping to uh get that accomplished in the next couple days here